Hi, this is Brad Smith from Beersmith.com, and today I'm going to give you a short overview of the MASH tab for Beersmith Web. Uh, this is the web version of Beersmith, which you can get as a free trial from BeersmithRecipes.com for 30 days if you just create an account there. Uh, these same features are available by logging in from your phone, or you can use the desktop version. Um, I have the recipe editor here open with a few recipes. I'm going to open this particular recipe, uh, my Great Lakes Porter recipe. I am going to click on the mash tab. I should mention I have uh, videos on all of these tabs available at beersmith.com slash video. Uh, but I'm going to jump to the mash tab, which we're covering today. Um, the mash tab only shows up, I should mention, for all grain recipes and uh, partial mash recipes. Uh, but from here, you can set up and mash your, uh, set up and adjust your mash profile itself. Um, so if we start at the top, I can, I can select a new mash profile just by clicking on the button here. And it, there's a number of preloaded mash profiles here for everything from, you know, temperature mash if you're using a equipment setup that, that allows you to direct heat to infusion mash, which are used by a lot of home brewers, rims and herm systems, uh, and of course, brew in a bag and even decoction mashing if you want to get into that. Um, you can edit the mash profiles from here just by clicking on either one of the steps. Uh, it graphically shows you the profile on the right side. You can, of course, add new steps here. Um, and down below, you can go through the various tabs here or various sections here. So, for example, the mash initial conditions is going to set my grain temperature, mash ton temperature, and so on. This is mainly a feature that we worry about uh, when we're brewing in cold weather. So, if you're brewing in cold weather and your mash ton is out in the garage, uh, obviously you might want to lower that down. Um, it also shows the total amount of weight that we're adding, the grain absorption. Uh, to the right of that, I've got the mash volume needed, and that includes both the recoverable dead space and ton dead space. So these are parameters you can set. Um, recoverable dead space is, would be like space below the uh, mash ton filter bed. That is recoverable, so you can you actually recover some of that volume. And then dead space is actually real losses. So for in, in the case of, uh, you know, some, some, mash, some mash tons have a dead space that is not recoverable, so you can't, it essentially becomes a volume loss. Um, next to that, I have the sparge and lauder volumes. Uh, in this case, I'm working with a brew in a bag system, so I actually don't have any sparge volume. Uh, but it will show me, uh, you know, what my estimated post mash gravity is, sparge temperature, and so on here. And then as we get to the right, now we get into the mash pH and water adjustments. Um, for the water adjustments and the mash pH estimates, I do want to mention that you do need to have your water profile set as part of the recipe. So, for example, for this particular recipe, I, I, if I go back to the water tab, which I do have a detailed video on just the water tab, uh, you can see I've already selected my base water profile. And also I've gone in and added my water salts. And so the estimate here for the mash pH, you see the unadjusted mash pH here, is based on that water profile and those salt additions. So it's important that you set that up first. In fact, usually what I do when I'm working with mash pH um, is I will make, I, I will finish the entire recipe first, and then the last steps I'll do is I will adjust my water profile and then go in and adjust my mash pH. Um, so you can see for this particular recipe, my unadjusted mash pH here is estimated to be 5.5. And down here in the bottom right, essentially what I have is a little uh, pH calculator that allows me to make the final mash adjustment. And so what I will usually do uh, personally is I will start out with the unadjusted mash pH, which is 5.5, and I'll put that in as a measured mash pH. So I've set those two values equal to each other. So that means uh, I'm, gonna, I'm estimating that the mash pH is going to be 5.5 to start. Then I'll put in my target pH, which is 5.25 here. Uh, and then I pick the last, the, the acid I'm using. And of course, you can pick the acid model as well. There's an MPH model, which gives a, a much higher value for acid needed, and a BW model, which gives less. Um, it's a matter of preference which one you use. And then down at the bottom, the calculator will actually show me how much mass, mash acid to add. So in this case, I need five mils for the mash acid. And I don't need anything for the sparge because, again, I'm using a brew in a bag system. There actually is no sparge. So what I'll do next is I will actually add that acid in so as an ingredient to my recipe. And typically what I will do is, I'll, you know, it says use five mils. Typically, I will use maybe two-thirds of that or something like that, like 3.5 mils I might start with, for example. Uh, and I'm going to add that as an ingredient now. And you can see that it shows up in the mash, adju mash acid adjustments. Um, 
So that gives me an idea of uh, how much acid I, I, I need to get down into the good range, okay? Now, the reason I do this is because we're working with highly modified malts today with brewing. And so quite often, uh, the, the mash conversion happens very quickly. So I prefer to add my acid up front, at least like two-thirds of it up front, so that I can make the adjustment uh, there. And then I can go in and make a final adjustment. So what I'll do is use this same calculator later on, after I've mashed in, after I put all the grain in the water, I will actually take a measurement with my pH meter, and I will make a second mash adjustment uh, again, based on that measurement. So let's say I mashed in and everything came in at 5.4, for example. And my target pH is still 5.25. You can see I need an additional 3 milliliters of mash adjustment to, to get to where I want to be. Um, so I will actually add that 3 milliliters at the end after I've, after I've made that final measurement and so on. Again, the reason I do sort of a two-stage uh, mash acid adjustment is because we're working with highly modified malts, and I'd like to be in that good range before I mash in. Um, so that's just how I handle it. But basically, you can use this calculator to go from any uh, measured or estimated mash pH to your target pH, uh, and it'll give you the amount of mash acid. So if you think of this as a small mash acid calculator, kind of like the uh, mash pH tool, which is a separate tool available in, in Beersmith, um, that's how you use this particular section, and that's how you get your mash pH right. So that's about it. That's a basic overview of the mash tab and how you can play with mash profiles in Beersmith. Um, you can try this for free uh, for 30 days by going to beersmithrecipes.com, and the same features are also available on the desktop version from beersmith.com. Um, if you purchase a gold or higher license, you actually get both, so, so one low price. Um, so anyways, thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great brewing day.